We have a very special guest joining in on the show. Amisha Vora joins in. She's the chairperson and managing director at Prabhudas Leeladhar Group. Welcome, ma'am, and thank you so much for taking out the time on this New Year special with us on Business Today TV. Many congratulations to you on the new position at the group, and here's wishing you a fantastic year ahead. How do you really see 2023 now as we start this new year um, on a slightly positive, optimistic note, but we do not know what is in store for us? Thank you, Sakshi. Wish you also and your entire team a very happy 2023, prosperous too, and to all the viewers. Uh, come to market, Sakshi. You know, uh, we, I think, had a very bright moment last year when both as an economy and markets, we outperformed the entire, most of the large economies globally. And I think that trend being set will continue. The outperformance of Indian markets, I think, will continue. But okay. from the market perspective, my view is that 2023 will be a, a story of two halves. The first half will still uh, continue to have the burden of interest rate, recessionary fears, uh, Russia-Ukraine war and its after effect. And sometime in the middle of the year that we will have to review on some of these parameters, where do we stand? Are the central banks taking a pivot? And then we need to reshape, I mean, reshape our investment strategy. Right, absolutely. But will it turn out to be better than 2022 for the retail investors? We've seen how the FIIs, you know, posted a record outflow this year. It was the retail investors, the domestic institutional investors that continue to keep focus in the Indian markets despite the overall macroeconomic uncertainty and the roller coaster ride that we've seen throughout the year as well. So for retail investors, the first time investors who entered the fray in the last two to three years, do you really expect we can probably go down 17,500 levels uh, also. Uh, not a crash, but whenever the markets are range bound, it is generally a stock picker's delight. And there are certain sectors, themes or stocks that will hugely outperform the market on a yearly basis. So that is how I think the year will pan out. Right. So which are the sectors uh, that you're going to be more bullish on in 2023? Which sectors give you the confidence that despite the overall still uncertainty that we may have uh, because of the recessionary fears and the economic slowdown, the rate uh, trajectory as well, the rate hike trajectory as well, there are some sectors that are bound to do uh, very well and uh, perhaps create alpha for investors. Certainly. So I think, uh, you know, I go by the basics and that is markets chases growth. And wherever in terms of growth, we see stronger visibility is where the markets uh, and the money will align. Within that, I think last year, second half onwards, we started showing a lot of traction building into defense stocks. And I think defense as a segment will continue to do very well because we still see a lot of orders coming in. At the same time, the execution of orders we gradually, second half onwards, start seeing into a lot of numbers in the companies. So that is one segment which is not very hugely owned, but uh, traction is building. And traction is not building for one quarter, two quarter, or one year. This is going to be a trend for the next four to five years. And as more and more investors, mutual funds start positioning their portfolios, I think defense as a segment will continue to do very well. Uh, so, and the second, with the defense also is a part of manufacturing. It is all under the overarching theme of manufacturing, whether it is defense, because I thought that they are neither interest rate sensitive, nor yeah. are they are, uh, and they are totally recession proof. So that's how I thought defense to start with. But mm -hmm. within that also, you know, uh, infrastructure, whether railway stocks, whether other infrastructure stocks, uh, other manufacturing where uh, the consumables are used like carburetum universals and things like that. Mm. And we just keep going into the manufacturing segment and we think that PLI is helping India over and above the Euro plus one. So all in all, I still think that the manufacturing as a broader theme will continue to be the overweight within most of the portfolios. Okay. 
Ma'am, we also saw that many PMS funds really reduced exposure to the export-oriented sectors like IT and pharma, for example, in 2022. Would these sectors still remain out of flavor for 2023? So I think in both the sectors, two things have happened. The derating has happened. At the same time, underweight port portfolios have gone underweight. So I see that, you know, uh, they will prove in the current year, along with these two sectors, the oil marketing company as a very defensive play. And there has to be some place for these sectors in the portfolio to mm. cushion against the downside. So I think that... Uh, you know, IT, a good amount of correction has happened. We cannot be uh, totally negligent of that. I don't think it is an overweight sector, but at the same time, a reasonable weight in the portfolio is a must. Right. And what about the star outperformers, the PSU banks, the banks? Uh, do you see the rally, uh, rally continuing in 2023 or uh, should one really take the profits off and this is it and the Cinderella moment will soon come? No, in my personal belief, uh, the rally will continue uh, because I think, you know, most of these PSU banks in their last uh, 10 years, as they were, you know, going off their glory, uh, had a huge chunk of non-performing assets or return off assets. Mm. And the way uh, economy is shaping up, they've got time to start recovering something out of this bucket but that something itself will be huge, which can set off any further the normal delinquencies in the business. And as the credit cost or provisioning requirement keeps coming down, I think these stocks have more leg uh, to grow uh, than what they are currently. Mm -hmm. So whether it is Bank of Baroda, whether it is PNB, uh, apart from, of course, SBI, because SBI we always considered a long and at par uh, in terms of uh, key investments within banking, whether it is ICICI Bank or uh, HDFC Bank, we always used to keep SBI in that category. Okay. And how do you also view the new age technology space, the fintechs, for example? These stocks really got hammered in 2022. Uh, the kind of wealth destruction that we've seen, most of the investors who had got the allotment are feeling now a little stuck with these stocks. Will 2023 be better for some or all of them? I, you know, but still, you know, a lot of problems are still taking place. So, Matto, for example, is still marred uh, by the top-level exits. We've also seen today as well uh, one of the top-level exits of the co-founder Gunjan Patidar. He's also resigned here. Uh, for Paytm, there is still, a, you know, confusion about the buybacks, for example. The investors are pretty, uh, you know, um, uh, confused about how to really view these stocks from now as well, despite the overall correction of 40, 50-odd percent. Uh, looking at the valuations, are they looking better? off or not so how would you really view the entire space see i think two things go in favor one is that the extreme bubble which was there in their valuations is behind most of them have corrected 60 70 percent mm. at the same time the managements know that the unrestricted supply of capital is not going to be there so more sharper focus is coming into business model. Uh, there will be few who, when the capital was available, have created very niche models. The growth will come down, but profitability will start improving. So I think at this juncture, the stock prices are more or less reflecting the long-term value whether they will start moving up in a hurry, I don't think so. Investors would like to see two to three quarters when these business models are changing and turning profitable. But from a value perspective, I think most of the value seems to be have built. Hmm, okay. How do you view LIC um, now that we've also seen Kotak initiate a coverage with a fair value of 1,000 rupees? Is that a stock that investors can now look at positively at all? I would definitely think so because the size uh, of the market share and the market itself, both are very attractive. And, uh, you know, it always takes time 
for a behemoth like LIC to align themselves to market. But this is a very, very valuable investments of government of India. And the segment is absolutely growing. It's not as risky as bank where you lend. It's not as risky as uh, a commodity company. It's a very steady and growing uh, uh, segment. So I think that, yes, at this juncture, one should definitely look. Okay. Um, Ma'am, if I ask you, say for example, a lot of uh, retail investors would be having some amount of money to invest in 2023. Say if they have about 10 lakh rupees to invest in this year, how would you really advise them to create a portfolio? So I would say that, uh, you know, this year they need to put maybe uh, 50 to 60 percent first in large cap and the balance 40 percent into mid stroke small cap. Within large cap, they should continue to hold, uh, as what we said, manufacturing, banking, very select uh, auto, but also FMCG. Mm -hmm. So instead of consumer durables, we are saying FMCG, that is stocks like Hindustan Lever. Instead of NBFC, we are saying banks, stocks like HDFC Bank uh, in private sector, where we are more comfortable. And as what I said, manufacturing, which is to start with stocks like Siemens and in infra, one can look at Larson. So large cap basket and we recommend a lot uh, the Ashok Leyland stocks like HPCL. I'm sure there are more, but these are at the top of my mind. And then they should market within their mid caps. Some of the themes which are playing out in India as the India per capita is, you know, uh, unlocking. So take a smaller theme of say hospitals, take a smaller theme of defense, uh, QSR that is quick service restaurants, uh, these are, and building material suppliers, hmm. some of the EV related auto ancillary. Hmm. So some of these, uh, you know, players who have a larger market share, if within mid caps they choose that, I think that will serve them really well. Right. And in the end, uh, if you could share some of the top three to five stock picks that you have uh, shared with all the investors and your clients as well for 2023? Uh, certainly, I, as what I was been uh, naming a few things like HDFC Bank, we think that, um, you know, because of the merger, the stock has slightly derated. Uh, but as by middle of the year, we go ahead with their MSCI re rebalancing and reweight. The stock should definitely outperform and uh, management will get also time to garner uh, the required deposits and transition. So I think this, this is the stock which should do really well uh, this year. Uh, we also like, uh, as what I said, within large cap for this year levers where we think demand will be more protected, the growth, plus there will be a tailwind of commodity pressures coming down, so margin expansion. So one can definitely look at that. And we can go ahead into mid caps where there are certain themes and stocks that we like. Uh, like as what we say, we like hotel also as a, team, uh, as a theme. We like hospitals. In hotels, we like Shelly Hotel, Lemon Tree. In hospitals, we like Max and Apollo, uh, sorry, Max and Kim's. Uh, we like quick service, Westlife. Uh, in building materials, we like Kajaria and uh, APL Apollo. So these are some of the larger themes that we are playing in the current year. I must tell you one thing this year for all the investors, that equity is one part. This is the year when they have to diversify their portfolio because yeah. if interest rates peak out, the bond side also will give us slightly more uh, return. At the same time, our in-house view is that gold also should give very good return this year. So I would very strongly recommend diversifying their asset classes right. uh, and investments. All right. Well, on that note, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Vora, for being with us on this special edition of New Year's. And here's wishing you, the entire team, and your family, El Navran, a great New Year ahead. And may it be a very healthy and a profitable one for all of you. Many thanks for uh, joining us on this edition. Thank you so much.